Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Saturday, July 13th, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. We're bringing you the news you need to know, and if you live in Louisiana and Mississippi, you're fluxed. Hurricane Barry, as it makes landfall sometime Saturday morning, will bring upwards of 24 inches of rain in the swath of yellow that you are witnessing right now. I hope you're prepared or evacuated at this moment. Keep calm. It's boom time. We care, kids. T powerful tropical storm Barry strengthens as it moves into New Orleans. People have shopping carts filled with stuff, thinking that that will save them. But the fluoride will just dumb them down and continue to walk up and down the streets with shopping carts. Homeowners sandbag their homes and tourists trying to get out of town jammed the airport Friday as Tropical Storm Barry began rolling in, threatening an epic drenching that could test how well New Orleans has strengthened its flood protection in the last 14 years since Katrina. My predictions is they're fluxed. Everything's flooded. All levees break. Pontchartrain meets the Mississippi and the entire city goes underwater. And this is due to the storm surge, which meets 24 inches of rain coming down the river at the same time. This is a double punch, a double tropical storm Barry boom, boom. From both directions, tropical storm Barry will boom. And right before it makes landfall, to add insult to injury, it will become a hurricane. Maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour currently and increasing. Do a dab. Do it now. Territory. For the first time, we have a tropical system moving towards the mouth of the Mississippi River. Meanwhile, the Mississippi River is swollen with floodwaters. This is the latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Unchanged in terms of the strength of the winds, 50 miles per hour. Starting to notice some convection just south of the center. This was four hours ago, so now their winds are at 65 miles per hour and growing. Do a dab. Center of the circulation. This is the latest warnings that shading of red, including Morgan City and the southern coastline of Louisiana. That's a hurricane warning. The shading of blue, including Baton Rouge, Lake Pontchartrain, as well as New Orleans. That is a tropical storm warning, and that is valid through the course of the weekend. Even though the forecast path doesn't explicitly show a hurricane strength storm making landfall, we do believe that that's still a distinct possibility. Uh, that time frame, late Friday night into early Saturday morning. But let's not get lost in the minutia here. This is a rainmaker, a flood threat. That's why the Weather Prediction Center has a high risk of flash flooding from Baton Rouge right through New Orleans all the way to the southern coastline of Louisiana. Look at that, 10 to 15 inches, perhaps locally higher amounts. You add on the potential of four uh, feet of storm surge and you've got your... Uh, recipe for disaster. Well, when we speak specifically about New Orleans, we know that they have updated their levee system since the disastrous impacts from Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The levees have been tested since then. Isaac came through in 2012. They worked as predicted. But now we may have found the Achilles heel for New Orleans. Think about it. We have a tropical system uh, that is going to bring two to four feet of storm surge. On top of that, heavy rainfall and And an already a tropical system uh, that is going to bring two to four feet of storm surge on top of that heavy rainfall and an already swollen Mississippi River. This is, again, a recipe for disaster as the flood water. Certainly is boom time, kids, and they're not letting us hear, show you that on purpose. Tropical Storm Barry is a storm moving through the Gulf of Mexico. And it could become a hurricane by the time it makes landfall sometime in the next few hours of my bloviating. We're talking three to six hours from now. We're going to ch show you the next, uh, the current models and the path. Uh, maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour movement still west, northwest at three miles per hour, which means it's just creeping up there. Driving winds east of this going to be blasting Louisiana right now. Check the live streams. Do it now. Do a dab. Google it. You'll love it. And we, we're going to leave you on here as the GFS model. Oh, dear. We just erased it. Hopefully, that'll parse up real quick. 
We have a live stream to catch. And you're looking at 24 inches of rain in the next 36 to 48 hours in the regions colored in yellow. Heads up. This is not something to be taken lightly. It's something to be considered deeply. There are tens of thousands of people in harm's way, and we're praying for each and every one of them. California earthquakes move the earth. R rippling rainbow map shows how California earthquakes did that exact thing. Move the earth. And these are almost like topographic lines, only they represent 4.6 centimeters of earth movement. Come check it out. It's amazing how much the earth moved during the earthquake. No one was injured, but Seattle area earthquakes felt in Metro Vancouver. Guys, did you hear about the 4.6 quake that hit Three Lakes, Washington before 3 a.m.? <laughs> An earthquake that rattled Seattle area Friday morning was felt in Metro Vancouver and felt in Fraser Valley as well. The 4.6 magnitude quick quake hit just before 3 a.m. at Three Lakes, Washington, located 56 kilometers north of Seattle. A lot of people's panties were in a bunch. They were bunched up and moist, moistened by the bunching. But this is simply the translation of the situation of the evacuation of the elongation of the translation of the energy up, which is not in the uh, subduction area. So let me just bring you up here and bring you up to speed. So we have this primary fault zone here that you all know is the San Andreas down south here, and it moves up into the Cascadia region. And then we have the rupture zone and the Cascadia rupture and the fracture zones, which are all named. These are the primary systems in red. The subduction, this is supposed to be an accreted plate, which is now two plate boundaries meeting, so on and so forth, based on the fairy tale. But we have in here is an island arc system of volcanism, which reaches up through Oregon and Washington State, including Rainier, Mount Hood. It comes all the way down to Long Valley, Caldera, and into the Geysers down here in California. And this energy is being transferred north. And it's still being transferred, 3.5 Monroe, Washington. And it could also be activating the calderas in this region, including Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Shasta, Kiss My Asta, and on and on down through the Long Valley Caldera and the Geysas. It was our prediction about four or five months ago that Mono Lakes would be the first region to start eruptive activity in the south. And probably up in the Cascadia zone, a volcano up in British Columbia, up to the north, before anything lights up that you are well aware of. So that is my current hypothesis, and I'm going to stick with it because it's based on science. Seismic update. No quakes of note, except a 6.1, 169 kilometers northwest of Nase, Japan, at Blot Echo Depth 251. Keep a close eye on this region for a devastating tsunami and earthquake happening anytime soon. Is it based on space weather? Well, it's anyone's guess. That could be the first spot of Solar Cycle 25. We're keeping our eyes live on it. As you would expect at the bottom of a Solar Cycle 2425 transition, solar activity is at a minimum. And we're just getting a pick up in solar wind speed here. So we basically hit the deck, KP0, you're all psychic, you know exactly what I was going to say, so there's no purpose of you even watching this podcast. But there is, because I'm going to recommend you watch the podcast I just did with Matt Powers, hours of powers, and get on with it. Now, I need you to read this, because it's important. Trump's attack on crypto could push Bitcoin up to 40000 by year end. Now, Trump... Trump is about as smart as a stump when it comes to crypto. And what he said about crypto is insane, but not really. He was going bigly on this one. I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money, and whose value is highly volatile based on thin air. But if you push a button on Coinbase, you can make the money instantly and put them right in your bank account. Said no president ever. And that's tonight's first boom for lack of knowledge. 
at the man who is at the top of the heap of shit, by the way. Why you would want that job is anyone's guess. Let's check out the Bitcoin market and see what's... Oh, it's up 2.84.5% live, almost 12 grand, headed to 40,000. Thank you, Trump. You just gave me a bump. Flesh-eating bacteria kills a Memphis man who visited Florida waterways. This is the third in as many weeks dead from flesh-eating bacteria. A Tennessee man died Sunday after he became infected with Vibrio villanufucus up your arsus, a type of flesh-eating bacteria which literally eats you alive while vacationing in Ukaluska County, Florida. Do not go there, his daughter said. And diamond. Flesh-eating bacteria sounds like an urban legend, but it actually eats your flesh and kills the fucking shit out of you till you're dead. Let me assure you it's not an urban legend because of what I just said. And it took my dad's life, Cheryl Bennett Wiglerio wrote Wednesday, as the bacteria ate the flesh of her father. Holy shit. Was the water brackish? Predatory green capitalism is monetizing the fucking air you breathe. And it's going to cost you. Yes, you wanted to reduce CO2, you alarmist freaks. Global warming. Ow, shut up. I gave you a slice of butt cake and I didn't expect this. Now get in your hole. Pardon me. You want to reduce CO2? So does Al. Then trigger a global depression that reduces global consumption of everything by 50% and destroys 95% of the phantom wealth owned by the global elites trying to monetize the air? Well, <clears throat> you've come to the right place and it's called Zero Hedge. Fear monger capital of the world. But it's also the capital, capitalistic capital of the world, which has nothing to do with fear because fear is a liar. It's also a market indicator. So you better get some Bitcoin now. You asked who's left to monetize. It appears the answer is very little. There's nothing left to monetize except the air. An air you breathe. <clears throat> and Mark's commentary reads as such. I respectfully agree the biggest enchilada is the air. Air, specifically carbon dioxide, CO2. We just have to figure out how to get the yokels to agree to pay for <laughs> which is formally free. Yeah, got it? First, we browbeat them into believing it's evil and that we have to tax it to save all the life on earth. Then, following the finest traditions in the degenerate late medieval Catholic Church, we commission sellers of indulgences to allow sinning at ever-rising prices, aka carbon credit trading. This doesn't require any value added. And the profits on buy zero, sell high are limitless because they're selling air to all you in progressives. Yeah, you're sheep and you bought into the narrative and I say, bah! now gets even better. Scientists discover a black hole that shouldn't exist but should definitely be dab worthy. Okay, so one of the weirdest objects in the universe, the black hole, just became a little bit stranger thanks to a recent study coming out from NASA and the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, what we know about black uh, collapses in this objects in the universe, the black hole just became a little bit stranger thanks to a recent study coming out from NASA and the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, what we know about black holes is that they typically form from a dying star where gravity finally wins out and uh, collapses in on itself. The star explodes in a massive supernova. And basically all we're left with is a black hole where gravity is so strong that light itself cannot escape. And we know a lot about black holes that they're fairly common across the universe. We have one even at the center of our own galaxy. But what they wanted to do as researchers was study malnourished uh, black holes where there's not a lot of matter uh, spiraling into the gal uh, sorry, spiraling into the black hole itself. Uh, so they studied one about 130 million light years away called NGC 3147. And they found something very strange. They found a pancake-like 
uh, accretion disk where the matter spiraling in towards the black hole is really flattened. And you wouldn't expect this from a malnourished black hole. Uh, so what they would have normally seen is a donut-like shape uh, spiraling around the black hole. But they found a pancake-like structure. So it's kind of very interesting. And it suggests that we don't really understand the gas dynamics that go along with these types of scenarios in very faintly active uh, black hole scenarios. So there's still a lot to learn about supermassive black holes. But hey, that's the whole point of science. Yeah, maybe it's also a Taurus and not even a super massive black nothing. Maybe you're just a super massive black charlatan. That's what I think. Yeah, we had a little technical difficulties. We're getting through it. Do you hear about the Thunder Moon? How about the Thunder Moon to pass through Earth's shadow on Tuesday during partial lunar eclipse? Yeah, that sounds big because it is. It's huge. Barry is expected to make landfall as hurricane Saturday morning while I'm speaking. But the thunder will fill the sky on Tuesday night as July's full moon, known as the Thunder Moon, glows brightly. Onlookers stepping outside on Tuesday night will be able to see Saturn and Jupiter just off to the right of the moons most of the night, making it a great night to set up a telescope and look at the full Thunder Moon, July 16th, 5.39 p.m. Eastern. Also called the Hay Moon, the Buck Moon, or the Mead Moon, partial lunar eclipse during this phase, time of maximum fullness varies. But there's the partial eclipse set up, and here's your visibility. All eclipse visible throughout all of Africa, most of Europe, and southern Pashministan. Yes, we're talking Eastern Russia, like even in Prussia. Increasing less visibility as you go towards China, and increasingly less visibility as you move across the Atlantic and go to the East Coast, which will boast the most toast during the eclipse of July 16, 2019. Partial. It's a partial thunder moon, partial eclipse for Africans. Scientists deep in understanding of magnetic fields surrounding Earth and other planets, including this Chinese woman with completely circular things that match this thing that is also circular. Now, did you know vast rings of electrically charged particles encircle the Earth? Yes, we call it the magnetic sphere, and it's about to wane and kiss your ass and rain cosmic rays and hell down on your head. Scientists deep in their understanding of this hell, raining down on us of magnetic fields surrounding the Earth and other planets as the magnetosphere wanes and we deepen into the death spiral of the magnetic excursion that you're living, including the grand solar minimum electron inertial effects of linearly polarized electromagnetic ion cyclotron waves of Earth's holy macaroni. Why do they even write these as titles? Well, we'll have to ask J.R. Johnson and Doug Hong Lee, published for 1 April 2019, where they discuss the role of electron inertial effect on linearly polarized electromagnetic ion cyclotron EMIC waves at Earth. If you don't know what that means, neither do I, but I, I read it. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. The magnetosphere is waning. The grand solar minimum is upon us. Seismicity is in the Blot Echo region of Japan. And we're getting jiggy here in Cali and up north in that volcanic arc. Tropical Storm Barry is about to flux tens of thousands of people's asses. Are you preparing? Preparewiththeranch.com. Preparewiththeranch.com. The best prices on long-term food storage. Do you have a big Berkey? They don't even sell them there, but they have something just like it. Filter your fucking water. Do it now. Do a dab. We love you. Thanks to all our Patreons, our one-time donors, our bloviators, our plovers. I want to thank to each and every one of you for sharing this video, for having the balls to actually put this up on your social media platform because you believe in me, you believe in Leah, you believe in us, you believe in the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And the reason you do is because you've been following us. We're not full of bull dookie. We're full of facts, unlike the IPCC. Be safe, everyone. We love you. Plant a seed. Food is free if you grow it.